Hi Via, it's Natasha and thank you so much for joining me today. I have my jelly plate out already. This is an 8x10 jelly plate and I have two 5x5 five five, uh, Nina cardstock panels and these are the two that I'm going to be working with today. I want to create a really light background and I am doing that using some spun sugar distress oxide and then I'm going to move on to some worn lipstick just a little bit I don't want too much and with my brow ring I'm being pretty rough I'm not really um, blending it in at all I kind of do I have like a darker panel that I do the main print and then I have a lighter panel that I'm doing kind of the ghost print with and I really just am kind of mopping up every little bit I'm not re-inking here I'm just rolling my brow and picking up all the ink that's on the jelly plate now I'm going to move on to some shaded lilac, which is a really light um, purple. It's like a lavender kind of color. And then I'm going to add four stencils down. Um, I've just put a little bit of ink kind of in the middle of my jelly plate, not all over the whole thing. And I'm just going to take those panels that have the pink on them already. And when I turn it over, you can kind of see it just leaves a nice light pattern there. So just adding some more layers, always more layers with jelly printing. Um, and yeah, so there's no, I'm not too worried, I'm not being fussy, I'm kind of just pushing it in, rubbing it on, and then turning it over to see what I get. And then once you have done it this way, you can take the stencils off and then use what is uh, left there as well. Because there's still more ink that is left underneath the stencils. So I'm using the same print again, and just again, no rhyme or reason, or I'm not trying to get one pattern somewhere. Um, as I said, this is just a really light background piece, so I'm not, yeah, I'm not being, I'm not too worried about how it kind of turns out. I'm just having a play, really. So I'm not sort of too worried or too fussy about what I'm doing, and you can actually see on this piece here, it's got a darker pink spot um, where there's a little bit darker pink, but it doesn't matter, and you can kind of end up avoiding it as well. So it doesn't matter for the final project, and I will only actually end up using one of these panels on this card anyway. So my main focus today is this ballerina stamp set with this gorgeous ballerina and I will have the links to everything down below in case you are interested but I am stamping it out in Memento Tuxedo Black Ink because I thought I was going to use my um, Spectrum Noir markers on these, alcohol markers, but I didn't end up doing that. I do have some tulle here that I got from AliExpress ages ago and I've used it in so many projects. And I'm just going to cut off a tiny wee square, which is all I need for a skirt for the ballerina. I'm kind of pleating it up uh, between my fingers there. I mean, not being too specific because nobody's going to look that closely at it. Um, but yeah, I am just going to put a little bit of hot glue down behind it and sacrifice my fingers when I squeeze the hot glue in between them because I want it to be a nice flat um, kind of bit up the top that I can attach to the ballerina. Now there is a wee bit there to the left that I'm going to um, cut off and just kind of round out to kind of make the skirt look a little more finished. And when I was doing this, I didn't have any more plans other than this for her skirt. But uh, you can see it's kind of created a nice sort of round shape there and it will fit on the ballerina nicely. I do need to cut that top bit off flat so it just, as I said, finishing touches and that becomes a really nice skirt for her. Now this is kind of really hard to see in the video. I must admit um, it looks much better in real life because I can see it a lot better. So you just kind of have to imagine. In a minute uh, in the card I'll show you kind of the side view and you can get a much better idea of what it looks like there. Although I kind of felt like the ballerina was the focal point of the card and so I needed to kind of jazz her up a little bit. So I'm going to add some of these little tiny gold gems, a tutu or dress or skirt, whatever you want to call it. Um, ideally this probably would have been done before I had adhered it down to her but that's okay. Um, it honestly was no problem at all. I was just using a tiny bit of hot glue and then adhering them on. And using hot glue worked really well here. I felt like it was the best option rather than a liquid glue or glue dots. It felt like it would um, adhere down to the tulle really well. So that was what I went with. So I felt like these little gems really served their purpose. It definitely kind of made her skirt feel um, a lot more special, I think. Anyhow, these are the little gems that I was using, uh, just so that you can see the packet. And I will put the link down below. 
Then here are the two jelly prints which are now dry that we created at the beginning of this video. And I'm going to go with the actual, the darker one of the two, but I do need to cut it down to fit my card front. And so I think my card front was a five by five. So I'm going to cut this down to about four and a half by four and a half, just so it leaves a little border there. Speaking of the border, I did want it to match um, the rest of the card. So I'm actually going to add some of the warm lipstick, which is one of the colors that I used in the jelly printing at the start. And that is how I'm going to create um, that extra pink layer behind my jelly print. I often do this instead of adding cardstock just because it's kind of um, less of a waste of the cardstock and it makes the card lighter overall and just something less. However, <laughs> you should be more careful than I was because I knew I needed the circle cut out in the middle of my cardstock and I forgot to leave that part white. So just uh, to fix that little mistake, I am cutting out the inside um, so that you can't see through it when I cut out the circle in the middle, uh, if that makes sense. <laughs> Anyhow, I have taken one of the circles from the circle die set, which is from Ellie, and cut out a circle directly out of the middle of that jelly print. And from here, it's really a matter of pulling the card all together. So I've taken this banner die set and die cut a couple of those, um, the third smaller size of banners. And then I'm just using some um, shadow gray from Umbrella Crafts. That's the color of the ink and stamping out happy birthday on the right hand side of both of those banners. So time to pull everything together and I'm just going to use some liquid glue to adhere down the um, jelly print panel onto the little uh, worn lipstick panel that we created earlier on and that way this will create a nice frame uh, for our card before we put it down onto our card base. Now I have this skinny, this is the skinniest foam tape from Alina and this is my all-time favorite at the moment i am loving this foam tape and what i do is i take the um both sides of the release paper off and this means that you are easily able to make it go around circles without having to kind of uh you know force it in a direction it doesn't want to go so that's my tip if you're trying to create a circle definitely take off both sides of the release paper you can see I have just adhered down my um, ballerina to the back and I just kind of made sure it was straight with the panel so it doesn't look very pretty from the back but that's okay and in fact I'm going to make it worse by cutting off some of these corners just so I can add in some extra foam tape um, to support all areas of the back. Now I'm just using the same thin foam tape. She does have a thicker foam tape, which I also have as well. In fact, I have run out of pretty much all of my Alina foam tape, so we'll need to make another order because as I said, um, this is definitely my new favorite. I have adhered it down to a 110 pound Nina Solar White uh, card base. And here I'm just going to put a little bit of foam tape on the right hand side. And then I'm actually going to just use some liquid glue on the left hand side because it is going to sit flat and even with the um, raised portion of the card already. So that's why I just need both adhesives. And that pretty much finishes off the card. This is a nice, simple, relatively quick and easy. I already had my jelly plate out because I was playing with it. Um, all I'm going to do now is add a few of those um, gold gems, which actually come in two different sizes. And as I said, I will have them linked down below. Um, and I'm going to add some of those in the top left and the bottom right hand corners just to kind of pull the card together and um, yeah, make it all cohesive. On another note, we have an amazing Facebook group that I will put a link to down below. We welcome all crafty and creative minds, so you should come and join us. We have such an amazing supportive group down there. If you like this card, please give me a thumbs up and share it. That helps me out heaps, and I appreciate you guys watching this video if you've made it this far. I hope you've enjoyed watching this card and uh, it inspires you to try something similar or give something similar a go. And I will see you in the next video. Thank you so much for watching. See ya. Bye.